short yardage and that period comes on, like those antennas in the back of our head go up like this is our money down right now. And I think that confidence, like not that we want to be in any short yard situations. Um, hopefully we're just scoring touchdowns, but if we are, we, we're prepared and I think we're ex more excited than anything for it. How, how did you guys work it? Or maybe you did the last half. Was it like an everyday kind of emphasis? Um, yeah, I would say more emphasis and um, more that one. That it wasn't just a short yardage period like maybe it was last year. It's it's short yardage period now, and we know the emphasis that we have to put on it and the focus that it takes to win those games. Because those certain situations that like we saw last year, one, one situation could set up a course for the whole game. So um, it's that, that little situation, you never know when that one play could be that could win or lose you the game. What do you How think the ceiling is for your offense? Back and the you have. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't want to overstep anything, but I think I'm really excited to see what we're able to do. Kind of the same thing for the defense, like I said. I think for offense, you see the talent we have from CJ, Trey, Jackson, Marvin, Ameka, Julian. I keep going on our whole offensive line unit. I think you see these players and what they're able to do out of practice field every day. Like I can't wait until, like I said, it's a different color jersey out there and we get to do it to them. Is there a little bit of a, a new identity for the offensive lines with Justin Mean? There, there may be one or two traits that people may see tangibly different than last year. Yeah, I think Coach Fry has really brought a lot to the table coming in this year. And for me, I mean, speaking for myself, the confidence level that I'm playing with having him um, coaching us is at an all-time high. I think I speak for a lot of the offensive linemen um, when I say that. It's just the way he's been able to kind of coach all of us as a whole, but then also individually and getting us better at in, like, particular things that we need to work on has been really remarkable. And I think we're all just excited to showcase what we've been working on the last couple of months now. You guys just say Oh, that's all this is for us. It's an opportunity. Um, this is an opportunity to show who the Buckeyes are in 2022. Um, obviously, we went 11 and two last year, won the Rose Bowl, and um, for some programs, like Coach Day said, that's a great year. For us, that was disheartening, and um, I mean, I'm still sick to my stomach about that year. So for us, it's we know what the expectation is in our locker room, and now we get a chance to go show it on the field. And I think that's all we're asking for is just the opportunity to go show who the, who we are. Is that a tough way to live? that 11 and 2 makes you sick to your stomach or do you like the high standards? Oh, I love the high standards. That's the reason I came for the school um, because I knew that I wanted to be do or die every week. Um, it wouldn't be worth putting all this work into what we do day in, day out, week in, week out if that wasn't the standard. Um, for me, I, I love that. I love the feeling of pressure and um, I think a lot of guys in our locker room thrive off that and that's what motivates us every day. You will see two first round receivers. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think that's a room that you really never have to worry about. Um, with Coach Hart um, having all those guys and all, I mean, talent is one thing, but the group of characters and people you have in that room is a whole nother. And I think that's really been pushing that group. I mean, Julian Fleming, Jackson really stepped up as leaders uh, I've seen um, so far. And it's been awesome to see what they've been able to do and build with the young guys coming in. You guys obviously have three returning offensive linemen starters, but Paris is moving to, to tackle two guys coming in who have played but, but haven't started. Just the confidence in that front five for you guys. Oh, I think we're, we're very confident right now. I think what we're able to do um, with the talent that we have, um, I mean, we have three guys returning. Paris obviously switching to left tackle um, where it's more comfortable for him, so it's not really a switch. It's just going back home. Um, and then Matt's played, I think, what, 500 snaps last year and started a few games in his career already. So for him, this is nothing new. It's just another day in the rodeo. And then for Donnie, he's one of the most exceptional athletes I ever played next to. So I think... Um, for me, it's going to be exciting to see what we're able to do and what we're able to put on film on Saturday. Look, what, what kind of advantage is it going to a game like this with a quarterback like C.J. Stroud who is, is obviously experienced and established himself as one of the elites? Yeah. last year and stuff compared to this time a year ago, you know, when he's getting his feet wet. But. I mean, I think even this time last year, we knew what kind of quarterback we had in CJ. Um, and now that he's had whatever it's been, 13 games or he missed one, maybe 12 games now, um, that he's been under center, I mean, it's just the same thing, really. I mean, he's the same quarterback. He has the same traits. I mean, the one biggest thing for us now, he's the leader. He's our captain. He's our leader. And he's the one that's going to be leading us in battle, and I wouldn't want to run behind anybody else. Is that where he's made the biggest stride more than compared? Yeah, I would say so. I think talent's always been there, and now he's just even a bigger leader. Luke, from having gone up against this defense in spring through fall camp, what, what's that been like? What's the challenge of it? going against this new defense from your point of view? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, going to be pretty interesting. I think right now uh, – 
Um, they got a lot of good stuff and a lot of good players on that side of the ball. Um, and for us, I think it's just going to be um, after the first couple drives, seeing what they're really doing um, and see what with their new defensive coordinator um, coming and obviously their head co defensive coordinator, who's now their head coach, what they're deriving from that, what the new guys bringing in and seeing what their base packages are. And um, after the first drive, we'll kind of have an idea what we're looking at. You guys have multiple starters back. Also, you're playing next to two guards. You really have to play the next two to get in the game. How, what kind of advantage is it for you starters to solidify March? You guys have just been able to gel together. Um, yeah, I think it's been awesome. I think uh, even with having Matt and Don as the starters, we've been working in guys like Enoch and Josh Fryer, who really are like rocks. I mean, I think Enoch comes in, he can play left or right, and next to me, um, just count for anything ever happens, that he's been um, solidified as somebody that I know I can count on. And again, it's not like I'm playing next to anybody new. I mean, I was with two last year, so Donnie was my guard. So I knew Donnie very well already. And then Matt, I started next to Matt for, what, two, three games last year, and then we rotated him obviously, so that's not a new face either. So I think, yeah, the, we had guys already in March that I got to gel some spring ball, but um, I feel like I played next to him for a really very long time. But the thing you said about Donovan Jackson, he's one of the most athletic guys. Oh, yeah. How, how does that athleticism show up with the guard? Um, I mean, you just look at his, he's what, 6'4", 315. Um, he bench presses 225, 30-something times. He runs a, almost a sub-540. Um, I mean, the freakish measures are off the charts, and you put him on football field, you put a helmet and pads on him, and you watch him go and strike and punch somebody, and it looks like Dylan exploded. So for me, it's it's pretty cool <laughs> to play next to him and know that I have him in my hip when I need him. And then on your other side, Matthew Jones is a guy who sort of has fought you know, for a couple different years to, to be a starter, and now here he is in year five in that spot. Just, you know, a, a guy who really sort of seemed to work to get to this point. What do you think yeah. about I think Matt um, is someone that really exemplifies the brotherhood that we have here at Ohio State. Because Matt certainly could have went other places and started, but he stuck it out and kept fighting, kept grinding um, to be a Buckeye. And for me, it's been really cool to see Matt since my freshman year here. He was kind of a more quiet, laid-back guy, and didn't really talk much. And then over the past two years, he's really came out of his shell. And he's been somebody, especially in our offensive line room, he's the eldest statesman that we've looked up to, especially myself. It's like he has a little wisdom. He's been around the block a few times, and um, it's awesome to see that the person he's turned into and the player he's turned into. Coach Day said that he said something to the team the other day about yeah. brotherhood. Yeah, exactly. So Matt actually gave a speech about brotherhood, and um, he talked a lot about how in our um, team, like, our culture's fighting. That's what he personified through his career here. And that's something he always tried to live up to, and I think he's a great person that when you look at for somebody who fought and is still fighting for everything they have, Matt Jones is your person. Matt, I mean, I, I've said this before. Matt's the only person I've ever seen that makes playing offensive line look easy. Like, and that's a really, I mean, hard thing to do because what we do, we have to move people from point A to point B against their will, and he makes it look effortless, which is just amazing. For somebody um, as that's as freakishly strong, when his feet are on the ground, he's hard to move. Very, very heavy hands. I know what you think of your defensive line. Is that a name that's very confident with their own? I don't know if you saw the quote. Um, yeah, I think we've been putting some really good days together here. So for us, uh, just focus on what we have to do and how to prepare for when the, they come in here on Saturday. Did you see the uh, Yeah, I saw it. But uh, for us, it's just focus on what we have to do. Luke, I know your teammate uh, Howard Cross from high school is on your defensive line. Is it fun getting to go up against him again? Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, Howie, yeah. So, uh, I mean, Howie go way back. So, for me, it's going to be really exciting to see him out there. And uh, I know what kind of player he is and what he brings to the table. And um, I'm, I'm really pumped. I mean, I got a few things up my sleeve. Jokes for him, inside jokes when I see him. What does that defensive line do well? Uh, they do a lot of things. I think they're, uh, they're, like they said, they're one of the best groups in the country. And I'm excited to see what they're able to do on Saturday. There's a guy that's a second-year starter here, kind of been around the block, played his role. Really well. What do you think of Luke Webber? That guy. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, I think for Luke Webber right now, he's he's been trying to um, really come out as a leader this year and um, lead the offensive line with a few new guys playing next to him. Um, I mean, he's just trying to hold the hold the helm down and protect C.J. Stroud. Really, that's it. That's his job. Whipler, 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 Whipler. Whipler. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not a person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Luke, you were talking before about sort of that conviction you guys have about the short yardage situation. How do you help facilitate that and success in those situations? How can you do that better now that you've been doing this for?
Yeah, I think it's more about the comfortability in any situation. I mean, um, last year maybe we weren't so comfortable in that situation. That's probably where we had the hiccups that we did. And now, like I said before, you hear, we, we look at the sign, we see third down, obviously not a position we want to be in. But it's more of, all right, here we go, rather than, oh, shit. So, excuse my language, oops. Um, but, yeah, um, it's like we're more excited now for that situation because we know we can thrive in that area of the field. What's it like uh, guarding for Trey John Henderson now that he's also in his second year as a Oh, starter. my God, yeah. Trey, Trey's an amazing running back. I mean, obviously, you guys see the speed and the agility he brings to the field. Then also his mental um, part of the game. I mean, the way he sees the field and the way he's able to set up our blocks, which is a huge part of it, understand the schemes. And then in pass pro, I think that's a very underrated side of his game that gets overlooked a lot, is the way he's able to step in and make huge plays in the passing game to free up CJ to make big throws. How often does he work on things that aren't just, you know, running the ball, like the pass protection? Yeah, um, he meets with us every day. So I think we always joke, like, in practice, he'll make a big block in the pass game. We're like, that's because you've been hanging out with us too long. So uh, I think those are like some things that kind of go unnoticed for him and that I'm super excited for him to showcase this year. You can describe as a thinker. Do you see that? Oh, yes. I think Trey has, as a running back, been one of the most smartest guys I've ever been around. So for me, it's been really cool to see how he's gone from year one now to kind of learning the offense to now having the offense down and understand like the real fine points that he has to perform. Off the field, he's a great guy, a great guy. So uh, I think for me, I hang out with him off the field now that he's in year two. He's kind of opened up as a person. Um, he's funny. He likes to joke around. He, like, off the field, he's, he's a great time. What's the root of knowing that you're going to be better even though you haven't played yet? Um, I think it comes from a lot of things. I think for us, it's the work that we've put in. Um, we understand what our shortcomings were last year. And like I said before, the first part of any problem is to understand that there's a problem, admitting that there's a problem, and going to work to fix it. And I think that's what we've done over the last year or eight, nine months, however long it's been now. Um, is understanding what our problems were as an offensive line and working on them and having Coach Fry come in has been a tremendous addition to our offensive line room and what he's been able to teach us and help guide us to where we want to go. So he, he has the same expectations as we do. Um, and that's been really cool to see him come in and try to, um, I mean, he's in it with us every day. He does some of the drills with us. I mean, and it's been a lot of fun to kind of have him along with the journey for us. Was it difficult to identify that there was a problem? You guys were top 20 in the country in every major defense offensive category. Yeah, it was really easy to identify those problems. We didn't host that big trophy at, on, in the middle of January, so it was pretty simple to identify there was a problem. Thanks. One last thing. Um, have you seen Trey get the, the game slow down for him? Oh, yeah. I mean, just the way he's able to cut and uh, – kind of set up our blocks it's the one biggest thing i've seen especially in space and be able to kind of navigate himself and set up blocks for himself to make the bigger plays next plays is that something you notice on film or can you see it oh, i see it live yeah it's pretty cool to see it live like i know scheme i see him pushing and i see him cutting back and setting up the block for us which is pretty cool to see yeah. Thank you. Set up the walk-off line. We didn't lift the trophy in January. Like, yep. I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah.